day. This is Speak Life Radio. I'll go tell my brethren ministry with your sister in Christ, Rachel Carlene Renee, a servant and daughter of the Most High God, Lord and King. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I'm trying to push things on here. Uh, it's not synced together. And I, I, I really wanted to do a live with this one, and I'm not sure <laughs> whether I should have because, you know, but I really didn't want to do the radio on this one. I know uh, Anchor Blog Talk would be on the radio, but I really wanted to um, encourage somebody. So I'm lifting up my whole household. I'm lifting up your whole household. I'm lifting you up, beloved. I'm lifting me up in the name of Jesus. And I am lifting the kingdom family worldwide, the beloved of God, the martyr saints, persecuted saints, those shutting down, those taken by men stealers, those feeling weak, weary, withered, and even worn. I am lifting them up and lifting up their family. I pray we're in agreement in the name of Jesus. I am lifting up the children worldwide, natural and spiritual children in the name of Jesus. And I am lifting up those that are the, the, the strong. I'm Losing my bookmarks and all kinds of stuff going on. I am lifting up those that are the strong, uh, weathering storms and those that are weak, still weathering storms in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I come before you, Lord. I truly need you. I need you to direct my heart. I need you to direct my being, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I need to hand this over to you because I really can't handle it myself. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I need you to speak to me, through me, and for me. Please squeeze every ounce of flesh that that the the Carlene in me or the Rachel in me don't speak, but thus says the Lord in me. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, let someone be healed today. Someone be delivered, whichever side they're on. In the beautiful and mighty name of Jesus, I pray. So good afternoon, beloved. Um... What I came to talk about, I came to encourage, um, only came for a second too, I thought, you know, I think, but I came to talk about hurt people can't feel your hurt. Hurt people can't feel your hurt. <laughs> hurt people cannot feel your hurt, okay? Especially if they're the one that may have even inflicted. It says, uh, they can't even acknowledge your hurt, but be made whole. Be you made whole whole now because the thing is I'm in the midst of some kind of feud with uh, certain family members okay and it you know it's all over you it's all over past stuff when people are they just you know kind of uh, or kind of you know explode or something it's really not what the issue is. And it's really not what the issue is. And let me tell you why. Because you may have gone through the sim similar image, uh, issue. And you say, well, I went through this too. And they never acknowledge it. They don't acknowledge it. Because it's really not the basis of what all of this is about. They're using that. And when you acknowledge that this has already happened, they can't acknowledge it because they know that's not the real thing. So I was, I was talking to the Lord. Um, I was thinking about this. I was like, wait a minute. God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. I don't care who's involved. God is not the author of confusion. So there's a bigger thing. There's a bigger thing. It could be purpose. And you know, the amazing thing is we just talked about fighting a good fight. Okay. <laughs> so the thing I'm learning, I am learning when you're doing the effective work, the enemy is going to show up. The enemy is going to show up. When you're doing an effective work, the enemy is going to show up. If you don't think you're doing an effective work, if the enemy showing up, He's validating you or they're validating you or you're being validated. 
When the enemy show up, I don't care who the enemy shows up through, you're being validated. We spend too much time even expressing our feelings and expressing hurt. It could be recent hurt. It could be past hurt. You know, we spend too much time expressing that to people that won't even acknowledge that it exists. So it's better to just give it to God and be made whole. I think one of the greatest mistakes many women make is they go into relationships talking about what the past relationships had done to them and what the past man has done or men or whatever the case. And that's not how you go into a relationship. That's not how you go into a relationship of any sort because you get healed from that pain. So it becomes a testimony, but it don't become an imprisonment. You know, I don't do this because this is what happened to me last time. Jim and Bob and 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 Leopard or whatever did this, and and I, I I expressed it and it broke me, and I was I was hurt for the. You don't you don't go into it just sprewing pain, because you got to get healed from that. Many of us don't give our time ourself time to be healed, even with family. We don't give our time ourself time to be healed. It could be your children. It could be your parents. It could be cousins. It could be aunts. It could be uncles. It could be your best friend. It's it's even like many of us going to friendships or fellowships. You know, I, I don't trust women because, you know, I had this close friend of mine and, and you know, we used to, we was ride and die together and then she go. It's already like you're bringing that spirit into your present thing. And then you got an eye on that person. You're like, Okay, I'm gonna see if you're gonna do this too. So it's like you're setting it, you setting up a spirit of failure from the beginning. No, let's be let's be made whole. Let's be made whole. See validation. You hear that? Nobody cars your song like that. I'm just saying. But anyway, so the enemy validating. Somebody needs to be made whole off of some past hurt. Cause you hear that? That don't make no sense somebody needs to be made whole over some stuff. And the first step is forgiveness. The first step is forgiveness. Because otherwise, it's, it just continues to be a cycle. It continues to be a cycle. It continue. People are dying. Okay? People are dying a lot within these last couple of years. And we really don't have playtime no more. We really don't have playtime anymore to just be arguing. Half the time, we don't even know what we're arguing about. Half the time, we don't even know what we're arguing about. Be made whole. Don't allow people to draw you into their brokenness. Now, if if it's an assignment to minister, but if, if they don't want to be healed and they don't want to hear, all they want to do is, you got to, sometimes you got to listen to that and then you just got to give it to God or sometimes you can't. Or sometimes you just can't because they don't want a resolution. The only resolution they want is what they already thought of from the beginning. But it's usually not peaceful. It's not a peaceful resolution. And a lot of people, a lot of us, we know when we're wrong. We know when we're wrong. We, we, we're not going to let you talk when we're wrong because we're trying to out-talk that rightness you're about to say. So when people over-talk you, they know you're about to say something that's right and true, so they're gonna overtalk you, cause they don't they don't want that solution. They want the solution that they already conjured up, and it's usually pain coming to pain. Hurt people spend too much time thinking of how they could hurt the people back. Revenge. I was I was um I was talking to a, uh, I had a uh, Uber driver, and this sister encouraged me so much. Um, but she went to law school. We might be around the same age. I think, I think she was older than me. I'm not sure. So I believe she was in her fifties. Yeah. Matter of fact, but she went back to law school. She went back to law school and she accredited her ex-husband because she wanted to prove to him and do him in. So she went to law school. I got encouraged that she just went to law school, but she went to law school for payback. 
And I'm like, just move on with your life. You're done with the law school. I mean, just move on with your life. But no, hurt people. They spend, we have spent, not they, we have spent too much time trying to hurt people. We spend too much time. God said revenge is his and he's jealous. He says revenge is his and he's jealous. He's jealous. So all that revenge is going to come back. It's, it's a never ending cycle. Because as soon as we, I'm going to pay, I'm going to get them back. I'm going to do the same thing. They, okay, so guess what? It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. Because God is going to recompense. So if we're the pain giver, we're going to receive pain. And if we're receiving pain because of what somebody else did, it's still going to come back. It's it's repetitious. Because God says he's going to uh, pay back. So it says here. And Nahum 1, the burden of Niv uh, Nivea, yeah. The book of the vision of Nahum, the echo sight. God is jealous and the Lord revenges. The Lord revenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. So when I was reading this, I was like, adversaries now most of us we know that's the enemy but it's also someone that opposes and this is why he calls he he calls people adversaries this is why somebody needs this because so much stuff um this is why an adversary one's opponent conflict or dispute now that's what we we how we look at it, but it's also one that contends with, opposes, or resists. So when we're resisting God, we're an adversary. When we're opposing what God says, we're adversary. So disobedience makes us adversaries. Mm -hmm. when, we are, when we are resistant, the enemy will validate. I know somebody needs to hear this. I know. So when we're resisting God, We've become adversaries. We've become adversaries. So it's not all those people that's doing all this bad stuff. No. If, if Even when we are, he keeps sending his messengers, he keeps sending his messengers, and we like, I'm not, you, we, we go in church every Sunday, we go into Bible stuff. We don't plan to uphold to nothing that we've heard. Pastor, preaching, teacher, evangelist, whoever is, is up there preaching. We have no we do not plan to do anything that we're being taught. We don't plan to even hear it, not even come taking notes, not recording nothing on the phone, whatever you're doing, sleeping in church, whatever the case may be, you're an adversary. Not even knowing you're an adversary. And this is why things can, because God said he blessed those, he blessed those that hearken, and he cursed those that don't. And this is why a lot of things come into our life, because we don't, we don't want to hear that. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. One thing God says is forgiveness. There is no salvation without forgiveness. And there's no forgiveness from God if we don't forgive. There's no forgiveness from God if we don't forgive. If we don't forgive. It says, um, let me see, let me get the right verse here. Am I even in the right chapter? It says here, for if you forgive, Matthew 6, 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So for if, because if, for if you forgive men their trespasses, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So there's no salvation without forgiveness. There's no salvation. So all that hurt and pain, look back over your path. Who has you, who have you caused that hurt and pain to? Who have God recompensed every man according to their works? Now, some things we have to bear the infirmities of. That's true. 
Hey, lady. Hey, woman of God, soldier. How you doing? Sending love out to you, beloved woman. Sending love to you and them babies in Jesus' name. So we have to. Now, it's not always easy. Sometimes we think we're forgiving people. And we really haven't. It's deep rooted in our heart. Bring up a conversation of it and see how your mood change. It's like, no. It should be a point where you're like, that thing had hurt me, but I'm truly whole. A whole thing is to be made whole. A whole thing is to be made whole. So even, this is a spiritual war. So even when the enemy knows you have been made whole, he's going to come, he's going to try. That is his thing. He's, he is the person that uh, tempts temptation. He's the tempter. So that's his job. That's his title. That's one of his titles. He's the, he's the tempter. He's the waster. He's the destroyer. He's the thief. He's the liar. He's a murderer. So we know, we know when these things start to pop up, we know that's not the spirit of God doing that. That's not the spirit of God. It could be our own resistance from God doing it, but it's not the spirit of God. So we have to, we have to really seek the Lord on even how to handle hurt people. We really have to seek the Lord. We really, sometimes you have to put off that engagement because you find yourself being pulled right into it. I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Wait a minute. And wait a minute, that's Colleen fighting. How they got fighting? That's Colleen fighting right there. That's Colleen fighting. Colleen is about to bang you in the head. That's her. No. The assignment. Think of the assignment. Think of the assignment. Think of where you are. If we understood our cause on our life, if we understood our purpose, and if we understood when we are actually making effort to walk into it, all these things come for a distraction and to pull you out and for the accuser to go before God day and night accusing. She just thought, fight a good fight, and here she with the family member, <laughs> you know? But that's what the accuser becomes. But we're blameless. So repent. In the name of Jesus, I repent. So he has nothing on us. Take back that little bit of power he tried to steal. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We have to pray about how we handle some of the deepest cuts we've been through from some of the closest people we've been cut by. Be made whole so it's no longer effective. That weapon that he's trying to use, he can no longer use it. Give them their time to heal. Tell them what thus says the Lord. If you don't forgive, God is not going to forgive you. And he's no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of persons. So you can't say, well, Lord, I'm a preacher. He's no respecter of persons. Because we're supposed to know better. Those that have been under the word, we know about forgiveness. We know about salvation. Some people don't put it together. If I don't forgive them, I'm allowing these feelings and emotion to block my salvation. Nah. Uh-uh. The enemy is a liar and a failure. In the name of Jesus. So, I know somebody need to hear this besides me. I know it. So all that worked up, you know, they keep working you up to, no, mm-mm, 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 no, no, mm-mm, 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 we got to separate ourselves from that. We got to, because that old, that's old stuff. I'm not going back there. I've been made whole. I'm declaring it. That's what God's words say. So in once it's manifested, it is so, and then too manifested, the promise is not fulfilled yet. But I'm not going to keep letting somebody pull me back into something that I've been healed from. And you shouldn't do it because that's like taking the band-aid off and then talking about you got cut. No, let it heal. I don't care who it is. Let it heal to forgiveness and freedom. 
and liberty in Christ. So I send the word of God to the people of God, to the ears of God, to the hearts of men. Y'all have the most blessed evening and blessed weekend. Worship God in Jesus' name. Peace.